Hello, today I've got another in my series of videos about extending the functionality of continuous forms so they have all of the features that are available in datasheets. Today I'm going to talk about how you can easily hide and restore columns that you choose. The related article, isledogs.co.uk, hide, restore, selected columns. Let's first of all look at what the situation is with datasheets. If you have a large number of columns that don't all fit on the screen, Datasheets has got several methods that you can actually help manage those columns at runtime. You can move them or resize them, you can freeze or unfreeze them, and you can hide and restore some columns as well. You have a context menu which includes hiding and unhiding fields, freezing and unfreezing fields, and moving and resizing literally you can do by drag and drop. I will show you that shortly. Unfortunately, none of those methods are available by default in a continuous form, but we can add them. Today, I'm just going to talk about hiding and restoring. If you have a continuous form, you may still have the same problems if you have many columns, too many to fit in the screen horizontally. You can do lots of scrolling, but that tends to annoy end users. You can use code to hide a selected column by double-clicking its header label. Very simple. All other columns then are moved automatically across so there's no gaps left on the screen. You can then restore those columns one at a time or all together using a combo box or a button. And all columns are restored in their original positions. This is what my form looks like. I'll demonstrate that in just a second. Let's now have a look. Initially then I've got both the datasheet and the continuous form open. So let's just start with the datasheet so you can see how this works. So we can just literally click and drag a column from one place to another. We can move over the divider between two columns to widen or narrow those columns. If we don't want to see the date of birth, we can just literally hide that field. Let's hide this one. And if we want to, we can also, let's just move the surname back over here, we can also freeze certain columns like that, so that when we drew this across, those columns stay in place and everything else scrolls effectively underneath those. Not one of those can be done in a continuous form. Apart from anything else, you can't change things natively at runtime. So we can't move columns, we can't hide columns, there's no such option there, we can't freeze columns and so on. And as I said, all of those can be added, but I'm only going to deal with the hiding and restoring columns today. So let's just get rid of our data sheet and just bring this up a bit so it covers more of the screen. This is what we've got to do then. So let's get rid of the date of birth. All I do is literally double click on the header and it's gone. Now when that happens then, a combo box appears and it lists the field that's missing. Let's put that one back. And it's gone back in exactly the same place. Do the same with this one. Let's get rid of a few this time until we can actually see all of the columns. There you go, we've now got all of the columns visible there. So I can put them back again one at a time. And they always go back where they should be. Or I can show all of the columns together. Oh, and by the way, we can on this filter and when we do so you get green colouring or we can sort fields as well and we get a yellow colouring for those as well. Let's clear all those, that's a part of another video and now let's explain how this works. When this form opens we create a dictionary, let's just reduce this a little bit we create a dictionary, which is a very efficient VBA method of storing data. And the data that we store is the position of all of the labels and the controls, giving both their names and their left and width data. So we know their size and their position from this. Now I can show you that being done, just by adding a debug line there. Let's close the form. Let's reopen it. Go back to the VBA editor and you can then see the names of all of the fields, left position and the width, left width. It does that for both labels and the text boxes on the form itself. Let's get rid of that and clear the immediate window. 
We've got that data stored. We know where the controls were originally and therefore we can put them back anytime we need to do so. The next thing to do is to note the code that we use to link both the control and the header label. When controls are in different sections, and in this case we've got the labels in the header and the controls obviously in the detail section, when they're in different sections this label has absolutely no link to the, to the control that it is actually acting as a header for. Same with all the other ones. Just to make it worse, we've got no means of clicking on a label that is detached in order to find out its name. Not only can we not find out its name, we therefore can't find out the name of the control as well. However, accessibility code gives us an easy way of doing that. And it also allows us to alter the size of a control as well. And I've got a, f a function here called shrink selected column and then that works on whichever form I happen to apply it on. I won't go through this in detail as explained in the article but basically we use accessibility code called ac hit test nothing to do with access as accessibility where when you click on an object then it will find out the vertical and the horizontal position of each from the mouse cursor from that it then works out the name of the object you can also find out the caption if you prefer from that providing I've got a specific means of identifying a control from a label in this case I've got the label is the same name as the control with the then underscore label so that a forename and that forename label gender gender label and so on so I can find out once I know the name of the label I can find out the name of the related control and once I've done that then I can then alter the width of that whether or not it's the control we're talking about or the label I can alter the width of those and in this case I'm going to alter the width to 1. Now that figure there 1 is in TWIPS where 1440 TWIPS equal 1 inch, 567 TWIPS approximately equal 1 centimeter. So I'm reducing the width of this when I double click on that header there I'm reducing the width of that to the minimum possible. It's still visible in theory but it's so small we can't actually see that so let's bring that back down again let's change to here so when we do this then double click on that it's reduced the width of that it's now in between there but you can't see it and at the same time as we do that everything to the right of that control is shifted across as you can see when I click on these here that restores the original width from the dictionary data and then shifts everything to the right of it back over again similarly if you do all of them at once and that basically is all there is to it and let's just remind you of the basic idea so when the form opens a dictionary is created to store the names and positions of all controls and their associated header labels they're not linked we have to find a way of getting one from the other there is it's possible to store it in a table but we don't need to for this this works very efficiently. The column labels and the controls are then hidden, inverted commas, using a function shrink selected column. Both are actually really remaining visible, but they're shrunk to a width of one twip. 1440 twips equals one inch or five, six, seven to a centimeter. All other columns are automatically moved across, no gaps. When restored, the original data from the dictionary is used to restore the column width and its position. Now that covers one of the things that is available in a data sheet. It doesn't cover freezing columns or moving and resizing columns, but both of those also can be done and I'm going to show you both of those in a future video. But that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you found it useful, as always, add a like and leave a comment. Suggest topics for future videos in this series. I'm always grateful to hear ideas from the audience subscribe and you'll be notified whenever new videos are uploaded. Thanks again, I'll see you soon.